What's up y'all, Riley here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my top 10 favorite completed manga series. So stay tuned. So like I said, we're talking about my top 10 completed manga series. Uh, that means I'm not talking about ongoing series, I'm only talking about series that are complete. Now if it does have sequels or spin-off series, that is fine. Those are definitely on the table, but if it is an uh, ongoing title like something like Berserk or One Piece, those will not appear on this list. Now I'm doing this video now because uh, my friend Omar over at the channel Near Mint Condition, if you haven't seen his channel before and you enjoy comics and manga, definitely check out Near Mint Condition. They cover comics, manga, anime, video games, all kinds of stuff. A great bunch of people that work over there. And sometimes I appear on some of Omar's shows. So anyway, Omar said, hey man, I'm doing my top 20 manga of all time video and I would like to uh, mention some other channels like yourself who talk about manga. Do you wanna do your own top manga uh, list and I'll link it to the video. And I said, yeah, man, I'll do that. I have been kind of mulling over that video in my mind anyway, so let's see what I can do. So I put together this list, but I decided that I wanted to separate it between my top 10 ongoing and my top 10 completed, because in my head, they are kind of two different um, groups of things. I, I judge things differently when they're still going compared to how I judge them when they are complete. So I decided for my own sanity and for my own sake to separate this into two separate videos. So I don't know exactly when I'm going to publish it, but I will eventually publish a top 10 list of my favorite ongoing manga currently. Now the other thing I wanted to mention before jumping into talking about the actual manga in this list is that this is a living and evolving list. This is something that I could be approached every year, every six months, every few months, and my list will probably look a little bit different. It just depends on how I'm feeling at the moment, or maybe I've reread something that I haven't read in a while, or maybe I read something new that I've never read before, but this list is constantly moving around. And I want to point that out because I know that a lot of people are gonna watch this video and say, hey, you didn't mention this series or that series. And that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the series. That could mean that it's my number 11 or my number 15 or my number 25 series right now. But in a few months, it could bump into the top five. It could bump into the top three. Who knows? These things change all the time. So if a series does not appear on the list, keep in mind, it might not be because I just don't like it. It might be something that just didn't break into the top 10. And I'll mention a lot of honorable mentions, just titles, so you guys know these are titles that I do love, they just at the moment didn't make it in there. Also, I may have not read it, so if there's something that's missing, I just ask that you respectfully say, hey, if you haven't tried this out, try this series, if it's something I don't mention in this video. I don't want people to be like, how dare you not list this title in your top 10 when you listed this one instead, because I know that's going to happen. Anyway. Thank you for bearing with me for the first few minutes of this as I explain this list because I feel like I needed a little bit of an explanation. Um, I will be listing my top 10 from 10 to number 1. Um, with each of these, I will give a little bit of information about the plot of the series, why I enjoyed it, and maybe just a little bit of information about when I read it or something like that. So, without further ado, let's talk about those 10 series that I absolutely love. Now, the first one, number 10 on my list, is a more recent read of mine. I think I read it about two years ago. And it's one that I immediately fell in love with, and that is Yoshitoki Oima's A Silent Voice. This is such a wonderful, it's a pretty short seven volume series. Um, it's a great coming of age story that has humor, it has life and love and everything that happens in here. And I think it's something that any manga fan should read. The series follows a young boy who is kind of a bully, kind of just a crappy kid who picks on people, gets in trouble, makes trouble for himself, and he really doesn't have any friends, so he acts out quite a bit in school. And this new girl starts, and it happens that she's deaf, and he starts really focusing on making fun of her. And the series goes on to kind of follow their relationship, him as the bully to her, and how it affects her as she starts growing, and she, you know, goes on in her life. And then we get to revisit them as they're a little bit older, and we see him try to change himself from being such a crappy kid 
and being better, being more of a responsible kid, a responsible young adult, informing these relationships, informing this relationship with someone that for all intents and purposes should hate his guts for the things that he did when he was a kid. And it shows him learning how to really make friends and learn how to make lasting relationships. Now, like I mentioned, it is a seven volume series, so it's pretty short. It is collected in this box set. I found this uh, at a used bookstore. It's a nice little box that comes with all seven volumes plus a poster and a little extra booklet. I don't know if the box is still available readily, but you can definitely buy the seven volumes. Oima also has a wonderful currently ongoing series called To Your Eternity. I made a video about that series a few months ago talking about the first uh, larger arc, the first 12 volumes of it. I absolutely love that title. Oima has such a great sensibility when it comes to telling emotionally gut-punching stories between this and To Your Eternity. I cannot wait to see what they do afterwards. Now, number nine, this one on the other hand is a series that I read probably 15 years ago. So it's not a more recent read for me and it's been a little while since I read it, but it's still something that sticks with me because it's such a great series for so many different genres, and that is Rumiko Takahashi's Ranma One Half. Now I had to have some Takahashi on this list, and for me, this is the perfect series from her. Now, I've read a lot of her other works, and I've not read some of her works. I still have not read My Sunny Koku, and I know that's one of Omar's favorites. I mentioned Omar earlier, so I wanna throw that out there. Um, but I am collecting the new collector's editions of those, so I'm excited to check it out. But to me, Ranma One Half is so perfect because it blends all of her different styles together. You get the great romantic comedy type stories that you'd find in something like Urusei Yatsura, but you also get really great martial arts and action stories like you would find from something like Inuyasha. The story itself follows Ranma Saotome and his father Genma, and they are martial artists and they are training in this place where basically there's a lot of uh, cursed hot springs. And each one of these cursed springs is the site where someone or something drowned. And if you fall into one of these springs, then you wind up taking on the ability or the curse of transforming into that person or that animal. Now, when they're training, each of them fall into a spring and uh, Genma winds up falling into one of a drowned panda and that's actually him in the back. And then Ranma falls into the spring of a drowned girl or a drowned woman. So whenever they are hit with cold water, they transform into that thing. So Genma transforms into a big panda and Ranma transforms into a female version of himself. So it leads towards a bunch of hijinks that wind up uh, connecting to the other side of this story, which is the fact that Ranma has been betrothed to the daughter of Genma's great friend. And they are set to be married, but they really don't know nor really like each other. And the hijinks are increased by the fact that Ranma is transforming into a girl. So now they have to deal with these situations and, and, and she has to deal with Ranma's uh, changing gender and uh, also all the comedy that ensues from female suitors who are interested in Ranma and male suitors who are interested in female Ranma. There's a ton of really great, really fantastic, fun characters that appear in this series, and it is one that I really love. If you're a fan of Takahashi and you haven't read Ranma One Half, I definitely recommend it. Like I said, it's a perfect blend of action, comedy, and romance with a ton of awesome characters and really great emotional beats as well. It's collected originally across 36 of these standard volumes. Uh, they did re-release the entire series across two-in-one volumes. I decided to keep the standard ones because the two-in-ones are the same trim size. They're not larger trim. Now, number seven. This is another more recent read for me. I read it just a couple years ago, and it is considered an absolute classic as far as manga goes, and I could immediately see why it is considered such, and that is Battle Angel Alita. Now, this series has had a recent little surge of popularity due to the uh, film adaptation that came out, I think, last year. I will admit that I still haven't seen the film adaptation, but I did purchase all of the really nice hardcover volumes that Kadansha put out. Um, during the marketing lead-in to that movie. Uh, the series follows the main character, uh, the titular Alita. She is a robot girl, basically, who lives in this future world where uh, the upper class lives above the surface of the Earth in this 
really nice kind of paradise looking floating island, whereas the rest of the people live down on the surface where everything's really grungy and gritty and scummy and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of crime, there's a bunch of uh, just illness and all kinds of negative stuff happening. So it's a very um, divided world where it's divided by the two classes, the upper class and the lower class. And Alita is trying to basically survive and exist in the lower class uh, society. And she wants to, uh, well, there's a lot of stuff she wants to do, but part of the story is the desire to find her way up that way. It's such a great story. And a lot of it is there it's twofold there's a lot of it comes from the wonderful characters that are created throughout this series and the emotional impact that each one of them has on the story um and in evolving alita from the very beginning of the series as she grows throughout the title but also the world building here is just spectacular especially the world building that goes on on the surface level of the earth in in forming this interesting and dark future for the world and for the people on earth it's a really fantastic series now as far as these uh, more recent hardcovers go there are six hardcovers in total the first five of them cover the main series. Volumes one through four each contain two of the original paperback volumes, while volume five contains the ninth volume, as well as a extended ending for that series and some extra bonus material. The sixth hardcover is a collection of shorter stories that take place during this time, um, but are not necessary or directly uh, impacting the main plot, but they're nice if you want to expand on what you've already read. This series is followed up by two sequels. The first sequel is complete, and that is Last Order. That one also from Kadansha. Um, it has five three-in-one omnibus editions, and then the last four volumes are available separately. And then there is the currently ongoing Mars Chronicle series. So I haven't read the latter two. I haven't read the spin-offs, the sequels and stuff, but the original series itself is such a fantastic series. If you like sci-fi and action and just great world building in your comics, this is definitely one to check out. And now for another more recent read, and this is one that um, is a more modern series too, and that is Q Hayashida's Doro Hidoro. Now, this I think came out around the year 2000. It was a monthly title, and I think there was some delays and stuff, but it recently completed, I think just within a couple years ago, it's wrapped up in 23 of these nice uh, larger signature size volumes. The first few volumes are really thin, like this first one, and as the series goes forward, they get increasingly thicker. Uh, not that that really matters, but just a fun fact, the final volume, volume 23, is like two times, if not greater, than the size of this one. Um, this is one of the strangest series, with some of the weirdest but most memorable characters that I've read in any manga. And it's also, I don't want to call it grim and gritty because it's not a grim and gritty series. Maybe you could consider it that, but it is a grungy and dirty series. The art in this series and the characters in this series are dirty. Like it makes me feel dirty when I'm reading it. And it's such a great effect because it works so great for this world. This is another title that has amazing world building. And it's that world building plus the really strange characters that make it something that's so special and individual and unforgettable when compared to any other manga. Um, the story basically takes place similar to Alita. It's kind of divided by class. You have the upper class who are the magic users in this world, and then the lower class are the non-magic users. And the non-magic users are kind of thrown into this grungy world, like I was mentioning, called the Hole, whereas the magic-using class get to exist in a higher-class society. Um, now, the magic users, it's kind of like mutants from like the X-Men and stuff like that in the Marvel comics, where it's something biological. It's not something that you can learn. There's actually an extra organ that they have in their bodies, which allow for them to use magic. The story itself follows our main character, Kaiman, who is basically an amnesiac, and he has no idea what happened to him, but he knows that someone made his head transform into that of a lizard's head. Now stay with me because it's really weird, but basically he wants to figure out who did this to him, and to do so, he captures magic users who come down to the hole, he captures them and shoves their head into his mouth, 
and inside of his mouth, there is a smaller head that pops up and says, you are not the one. Or supposedly when he finds the right person, tells him that that is the one. And he does this to every magic user that he can find so he can figure out who did this to him. He is, like I said, an amnesiac, so he has no idea who did this or even really who he was. And a lot of this story is this mystery, this, uh, you know, it's it's expanding on the idea of who Cayman, who Cayman really is, um, where he came from, what happened to him. And then from there, it expands on the nature of this world and magic users and demons and devils and stuff. And it is just such a bizarre but fantastic title. If any of that sounds intriguing to you, definitely go check it out. There is an anime adaptation. They have one season out. I think it's 12 episodes. It is available on uh, Netflix. I've only watched the first episode. And while the art style is a little bit more clean than what I would want for a series like this, um, it is a pretty fun adaptation. So I would at least recommend checking that out if my description of Doro Hedoro is intriguing to you. Now, next is one that I grew up with back when I was in high school, and a lot of people that are around my age can probably say the same thing. I used to watch the original anime adaptation when it was on Adult Swim, and that is Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa. Now, speaking of series with wonderful world building, this is without a doubt one of the best. Full Metal Alchemist follows a couple of young guys, Edward and Alphonse Elric. Edward and Alphonse have lost their mom, and in this world where alchemy is not only a thing that's possible, but it, what is a huge thing in this world, they want to try and do the impossible and really the illegal and morally frowned upon and resurrect their mother. They create a transmutation circle, they do everything that they think that is right, and they attempt to resurrect her, but instead they bring to life a thing that is not their mom. And in the act, because of the law of equivalent exchange, Edward winds up losing an arm and a leg, and Alphonse loses his entire body. So now from here forth, he's just a soul that's connected to an empty suit of armor. The series follows the brothers as they go forward trying to learn more about alchemy and learn more about the possibility of human alchemy and bringing a human to life. And in their journey of figuring out these things about what they want to learn so that they can possibly bring back their mother, they learn about some really serious conspiracies that are going on within the government of this world. It is such an amazingly crafted series with such a huge world with amazingly diverse characters. It is one of the most perfect action adventure manga that exist because I think that Arakawa does a great job of creating all these very diverse characters with diverse power sets and abilities that they can use, whether they're alchemy users or otherwise. And the way that she does this is in a way that there's no uh, character that gets left in the dust, like a series like Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. As you move forward there and the Saiyans become the main focus, any non-Saiyan character got left in the dust. In here, you don't have to worry about that happening, which is great because every single character that is introduced matters and means something and does something important in this story. It is a wonderful series. I absolutely love this title. There are two anime adaptations. The first one is the one I watched back when I was in high school. It came out on Adult Swim. It adapts the first chunk of volumes pretty accurately, but then after that, it goes off the rails because the anime uh, was happening while the manga was still ongoing. They later, after the manga ended, adapted it into a second series called Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which adapts the series in its entirety accurate to the original manga. The original manga was published across 27 paperback volumes. Currently we have these hardcover full metal edition volumes coming out. I believe there's going to be 17 or 18 of these, uh, but they are oversized, wonderful looking editions with great paper quality, and there's some added color pages in here that were not in the original paperbacks. The cheapest route though if you want to collect this series is probably the three-in-one omnibus paperbacks. Uh, there are nine of those that complete the entirety of this story. Now this next series is the first of two that I have on this list from the same author, and it's the only author that I have appearing twice on this list. And that is 20th Century Boys from Naoki Urasawa. Now Naoki Urasawa has proven himself to be one of the masters of manga, especially modern masters. Pretty much every series he's done has been not just popular, but an unmitigated hit among fans and critics. He's done so many popular works, and one of his biggest and most well-known is without a doubt 20th Century Boys. 
The series follows our main character and it shows him kind of flashing back between his childhood and the current age, and it deals with one of his friends whom he finds out has killed themselves. And in looking at his friend's death and kind of remembering a lot about what was happening when they were younger, he starts unveiling this big conspiracy that connects to his childhood and the childhood of a lot of the people that he grew up with. And Urasawa crafts this amazing mystery within this series that deals with political intrigue and a plot to do all kinds of things to try and possibly take over the world, all spinning out of this very small and simple murder mystery where we get to follow a very average Joe type of character as he wants to uncover what's going on and how it connects to him and his group of friends when they were kids. It is such a wonderfully told story and that is obviously going to be true about anything that Urasawa does, but this one is such a well done story and one of the best parts about it is that he writes it in a way that you can follow along with the mystery and try and solve it yourself, which is just something that I love. Not all creators do that, but he definitely makes it to where you can follow this and kind of make your own guesses because of evidence that he provides throughout the title. The series is collected across 22 volumes, and then there is the direct follow-up that wraps up the story called 21st Century Boys, which is two volumes. But right now we're seeing it re-released as these two-in-one perfect editions, these thicker volumes. There are going to be 11 for 20th Century Boys and then one for 21st Century Boys. I think we have volume nine out at this moment. So we're getting close to the conclusion in the nice perfect editions, which is awesome because the original single volume editions uh, were starting to go out of print. But these are really nice books and if you've never read anything by Urasawa I highly recommend checking out his work and this is definitely one of the best of his titles. Now moving forward we're at number four now so getting towards the end of the list and I've got Inio Asano's Goodnight Poon Poon. Now I know some people would maybe for Asano choose Solonin which is another wonderful story but for me Goodnight Poon Poon is his magnum opus. Goodnight Poon Poon is such an amazing story and one that was probably the most emotionally affecting on me of anything that I've ever read. Now, this is definitely one of those don't judge a book by its cover type things, because looking at that, all you see is this little cartoon bird ghost dude. And what do you get from that? The story follows this character, Pun Pun Punyama, who in the beginning is just a normal kid. And we see him dealing with average problems that you might encounter yourself as you are younger. Um, family issues, issues between his parents, uh, you know, issues with him and friends, making friends, discovering his sexuality for the first time and stuff like that. As the series progresses, we follow Pun Pun as he grows into being an older child, into his teenage years, and into being a young adult. And throughout this course of this series, we continue to follow him through his issues that he develops throughout his life and dealing with a lot of serious problems, such as some pretty overwhelming issues with depression and anxiety and stuff like that. That said, being someone that deals with depression and anxiety myself, this spoke to me on a very personal level. There's a lot of stuff that happened in here that I never experienced, but there's a lot of stuff in here that I could really relate to, and that was one of the reasons why this one impacted me so heavily and why I love this series so much. I have to give fair warning though, this is one of the darkest series that I've read and definitely one that is not for everyone. It is one that by the time I finished it, I felt dirty. Like <laughs> There is some stuff that happens in this book that is difficult to deal with. Um, but if you're up for it, this is one of the finest pieces of graphic literature that I have ever read. It is a wonderful coming of age story following someone that I think reflects a lot of us and the things that a lot of us deal with in our everyday lives. So definitely check it out. Um, don't let the little cartoon ghost bird guy turn you off. It is a wonderful little storytelling tactic um, that Asano does to um, input him as the vision of the main character um, instead of giving him an actual body and face. Um, it, it, it makes him stand out and it's something that there's a million different reasons and people have discussed why he might have chosen to do this. It might be because of the fact that he wants to give you a way to more easily uh, reflect yourself onto the character so you can see yourself in Pun Pun or 
maybe just because there's a lot of times where he changes the physical appearance and the visible appearance of Poon Poon based on who he is mentally and what he's experiencing. And it's a good way to um, kind of portray the feelings that you might have and, and the way that you might feel when you deal with serious mental health issues. I highly recommend it, but again, it's not for everyone. It's not for the faint of heart. If you don't want something that is going to be so emotionally tasking and draining, it might not be for you. Asano has done a lot of other brilliant work though, so I definitely recommend checking out his works. I mentioned Solinen already, and he also has the ongoing series right now, Dead Dead Demons, DDDD Destruction. Moving into my number three choice, this is the second book on my list from Naoki Urasawa, and I know a lot of people are gonna be like, I can't believe that you chose that one over this, 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 whatever, and I can't believe that you put that one higher than 20th Century Boys, but this series is one that is so important to me. It was one that really spoke to me um, and the things that I enjoy, and I think it's just a really wonderful title, and that is Pluto. Now, this series is the adaptation of a Astro Boy story uh, from Osamu Tezuka's classic Astro Boy series. The Astro Boy story in question is the greatest robot on Earth, and in the adaptation that we get from Urasawa, we follow basically what is a murder mystery of robots. Someone is out there taking out all of the greatest robots on the earth. Uh, these could be robots that people love because of the things they did for humanity or the things they did for nature or whatever the purpose may be. They might be some of the most advanced robots who have, you know, some semblance of feeling and emotion and a soul. But for some reason, there's something out there that is taking them all out. And we follow a robot police detective who is trying to investigate what's going on and figure out the story here. It is such a wonderfully told mystery. And again, like I mentioned with 20th Century Boys, it's something that you can follow along with and, and have all your own ideas as you go around every twist and turn um, and after he continues to reveal new plot points about this. It is such a wonderful story. I think one of my favorite things is the idea that a lot of manga do, a lot of stories do, where they talk about what it means to be human, what it means to be alive, especially when we talk about series that deal with uh, robots and cyborgs and androids and stuff like that. Um, I mentioned this in a video before where I talked about uh, Inuyashiki, and I said the same thing, that it deals a lot with mortality and what it means to really be human and what it means to be alive. Because you have a robot body, does that mean that you are not a human even though you completely look human? Is it about the soul? Can a robot have a soul? These are all the types of questions that I really love seeing in books, in comics, in any type of entertainment. I absolutely love these stories. So I'm kind of biased there because it deals with a concept that I really enjoy reading about. And so that kind of boosted it up. But I also think that this is such a wonderful series because it is very concisely told. It's only eight volumes long, eight of these standard slim volumes, as opposed to you know, 20th Century Boys, which is 24 volumes total, considering the uh, the sequel that wraps it all up. I think that that makes it something that is not, I don't want to say better because these titles will switch places on my lists and stuff. It's just right now, I think that this is the better title, but it makes it, I think, more effective. It, there's no fat that needs to be trimmed. There's no extra material that could be taken out to make this a better, more concise story. It is such a perfectly put story, and I love it so much. If you have not read Pluto before, I highly recommend it. Like I mentioned, it's only eight volumes long, so it's a pretty short uh, series, and it should be readily available to uh, buy as well. Now that brings me to number two, and this is the only one that I do not own physically because the series has not been published in the US as of yet, and that is Steel Ball Run. Now, a lot of people are like, whoa, whoa, that's the seventh part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That series is not concluded yet. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure parts one through six were one ongoing long series, and then it ended and started up with Steel Ball Run, which when it started, people did not know whether this was going to be a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series or not. And as it went on, we found out, yeah, it is. Steel Ball Run is 
a separate series. It does take place in the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure universe, although in a different world than the original six titles. Um, so I wanted to put that out there kind of to, to make sure people are not like, hey, hey, you said this was no ongoing titles and Jojolian Part 8 is still ongoing. Jojolian is also its own series. So yes, this one is concluded. Now, at the end of Part 6, some stuff happened and Part 7 winds up taking place in a new timeline, a new universe. And it takes place back in the 1800s in the US. And at the time, you know, the US is not as uh, developed and populated. And uh, so we kind of take place in this Wild West setting. The story here follows, basically there's a big race that has been concocted th that you have to go from one coast to the other and whoever wins gets a large sum of money. So we are introduced to our main characters here, Johnny Joestar and Gyro Zapelli. I know some people are gonna say, is it Gyro, is it Hero, is it Hero? I say Gyro because of his abilities dealing with uh, things spinning, so I'm thinking gyroscopic, so Gyro Zapelli. Um, so they are trying to win this race and make it across the coast before everyone else, but very soon we discover that there is some sort of a kind of conspiracy going on about these mysterious body parts that are scattered around the desert, around the US, that can grant people abilities when they come into range of them. And of course, these abilities are the stands that we've become familiar with through the previous parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So going forward, we see these characters develop abilities and it turns into a big, a big action title where we see all the stand fights that we're familiar with from the JoJo series, but it's also dealing with this whole, uh, you know, race to make it across the US. Now, the primary villain eventually makes himself known here, and he is also after all of these mysterious pieces of a body that are giving people powers, um, which I don't want to give too much on that because spoilers. Um, and he is the president of the United States called Funny Valentine, who is such an incredible villain with strange and intriguing abilities that make him such a just crazy force to be reckoned with. Um, and he's also really weird because when you first are introduced to him, he's kind of a short, portly looking guy, but very soon thereafter, the art changes and he becomes this big, muscular, uh, kind of stereotypical for Jojo characters uh, looking guy that winds up being a big force, like I said, to be reckoned with for the main characters. I absolutely love this series. I love Jojo in general. I am a huge Jojo's Bizarre Adventure fan. I've loved the series since they started publishing Stardust Crusaders in the US. Uh, back in, I think, 2005, and I've continued to read it since then. I'm so thankful that Viz has started to publish more parts of the manga in the U.S. Now we're getting towards the end of uh, Diamond is Unbreakable, the fourth part, and I am hoping that they will continue publishing it and eventually get to publish Steel Ball Run in English because it is such a great series. I think that it encapsulates everything that is amazing and works so well about the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure franchise, and it does so in a way that is really new reader friendly, so you don't have to worry about reading six parts and like 80 something volumes of material, however long it was uh, before this. And it has just amazing interpretations of these characters that all have their own interesting powers and their own uh, interesting uh, motivations as they go forward. I love this series so much and I, like I said, really hope that they wind up publishing it in English because everyone needs to read this. Even if you're not a JoJo's fan, this is just such a wonderful story with amazing artwork and just one of the best manga villains that exists, period. Now, I covered a lot of stuff. I know there's a lot of things that people are like, you didn't say this, you didn't say that, you didn't say this. And like I said, you know, this list will morph, this list will change. You ask me again in a year and my list is gonna be completely different. But I did compile a list of my honorable mentions. These are titles that I love um, just as much as anything that I'm talking about here, but that at this moment did not make it into my top 10. I wanna mention these so people know I love these titles too. I, I'm not forgetting about anything. I'm not forgetting about some of your favorites. And if I don't mention anything on my list or in my honorable mentions, keep in mind, maybe I haven't read it. And just like I said earlier in the video, comment down below if, if I didn't mention something, let me know, hey, if you haven't checked this one out, you should definitely check out this series. So 
some more series, some of my honorable mentions are, of course, the classic Akira. The other parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 1 through 6, which are all complete. Uh, Parasite, a wonderful horror series that I'm definitely going to be making a video for uh, coming up in October since we're heading into Halloween time. Um, Uzumaki, another great horror series. And honestly, anything by Junji Ito is an A-plus in my book. Dragon Ball, classic shonen series. I grew up on that. Obviously, I love it. And another shonen that I grew up with, Yu Yu Hakusho. Cross Game, an amazing sports title, baseball title that is so full of character and heart. Um, Ice Shield 21, a, one of the most fun titles, a football sports series. Fantastic series with amazing artwork. Bleach and Naruto, two of the big three that concluded. We still have uh, One Piece ongoing. I'm a huge Bleach fan. I know a lot of people not the biggest fans of it, but for me, it was my favorite series back in high school. I loved that series, and I grew up reading Naruto. I grew up reading it since back in 2002, 2003, when they started publishing it in the U.S. GTO, fantastic series, great teacher on Azuka. Trigun, I grew up watching the anime and then read the manga as it was coming out in the U.S., just a really wonderful action series. And of course, Helsing, that we're getting the new Dark Horse hardcover editions of. So those are some of my honorable mentions, just a bunch of other titles that wind up floating around in my top 25 or so uh, manga of all time. And yeah, if I didn't mention something that you love, if I neglected to mention something that you're a fan of, uh, mention down below. I might have not read it. Recommend it to me so that I can know that I should read this title and maybe the next time I do one of these, it'll wind up on the top of my list. Now, number one, and this shouldn't be a surprise to a lot of people. If you're new to my channel, you might not be familiar with how I feel about this series, but if you've been watching my videos for a little while, you know that I love this manga and I mention it any chance I get, and that is Takehiko Inoue's Slam Dunk. Now, a shonen manga, and not only a shonen manga, but a sports manga, makes it to the top of my list, but this is, without a doubt, my favorite manga of all time. I read this for the first time a few years ago, and it immediately just knocked me over with how great it was. I, I mentioned a second ago that I made another video specifically about this series, so if you would like to learn more about Slam Dunk, definitely check that out. It is, I think I talked for about 30 minutes about Slam Dunk um, and why it's so great and why it's still one of the best shonen manga. Now, the series is pretty simple. It follows a high schooler, Hanamichi Sakuragi, as he wants to basically impress a girl, and to impress a girl, he decides that he's going to try out for the basketball team. He starts playing for the basketball team, and as he goes forward, he winds up developing interest in actually being good at basketball, not just because he wants to impress this girl, but because he cares. And the series follows him and the team at his school, Shohoku, as they play through regional tournaments and try to be the best team. It's a pretty simple story, but it's one that is so perfectly told. It's so well done, and it has such amazing characters, storytelling, and pacing to where you develop so much care for these characters. And I, I highlight the pacing, and that's a major aspect that I talked about in the video that I made specifically about Slam Dunk, because Inoue masterfully paces a series to where you feel like you're there on the court reading these stories. Now, I'm not a sports fan. I am not a big sports guy. I, I don't watch basketball, football, baseball, or anything. I don't play any sports. But this is such an amazing series with amazing characters that it transcends any interest that I have or don't have in sports. And without a doubt, became one of my absolute favorite manga of all time. So, if you have not checked out Slam Dunk, I highly recommend it. I know a lot of people are going to say, ah, oh, sports manga. I don't know. I don't know. That's for me. Trust me. It is amazing. Try it out. Give it a few volumes. It's so good. It is. There's a reason why it's at the top of my list. So that is my top 10 manga of all time. Comment down below with anything that you love that I did not mention on this video because it might be something, again, that I haven't read and I'd like to check it out. So thank you so much for watching. I know this is a longer video, but I have a lot to talk about with my top 10 manga. There's a reason why they're my favorites. I have a lot to say about them. So I hope that I maybe recommended something in this that you haven't read yet. Maybe something that you'll be interested in checking out. And if you decide to, let me know down in the comments um, if you decide to pick one of these series up and try it out yourself. 
As well, I want to give a huge shout out to my subscribers over on Patreon. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you're watching my video right now and you would also like to support me, click the link down below and uh, there's going to be a link down there that shows you what I put up on my Patreon, all the different things that you get. And of course, the biggest benefit of subscribing to my Patreon is you get to support me in making my channel better. As well, I want to give a huge shout out to the Omnibus Collectors Network. That is the other channel that I do a lot of awesome uh, YouTube work on with a lot of awesome YouTubers, including Omar from Near Mint Condition, who asked me to make this video, and a bunch of other YouTubers from a bunch of other channels that I have so much fun with. I do videos every Thursday with them. We talk about anime, manga, comics, cartoons, TV, movies, video games, any geeky stuff. We talk about it on there and it is a great channel. We have a great time. So if you like what I do here, definitely check out the Omnibus Collectors Network. Now, finally, if you stuck with me this long, thank you so much. I appreciate you for watching this long video with me. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I highly appreciate you spending the time with me. I hope that you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I put out at least three videos a week talking about comics, manga, and single issues. So I talk about all kinds of geeky stuff. So I hope you'll consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you're notified of all the new content I put out. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.